goodbye. Goodbye. Miss Missoni. Missoni? Missoni. Breaking the sound barrier or something. Yeah. Got a bit of boat envy, Gavin. Hello, just the conditioning. And this is the bottom end of the middle finger, the Peloponnesus. That was yeah. floating. The guy that's drifting has only just come up on deck. Whoa, he's heading towards the big one. After just about, well, he did hit us. Yeah, he did. What damage has he done? I don't know. He, he, I mean, the, the person on that boat there was waving their arms around, and so yeah. they must have come very, very close to yeah. hitting them as well. It's just difficult to anchor in these positions. I know, it's so bad. <laughs> Goodbye. Can't remember what it was called. Monum Vassia. Monum Vassia. That's the town that would near Mon the, 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 the island. The island, yeah. Island. Monum Vassia. I'm not the sure. The island that looks like the Rock of Gibraltar. And it's called Yash Yashi or something rather. seeing those little red things on the plotter yeah. and there's, when you touch them they don't come up with anything so I thought oh well I don't know what they're for when I um, I found this little thing now where is it still got them there I'll zoom out there it is at a particular zoom I get this there Ah, mister. And we're the only yacht out here. I don't see anybody else around. Military practice area. So when I click on that, category, category of a military practice area, submarine exercise area. Um, submarine exercises take place frequently in this area. Um, a good lookout is to be kept when passing through these waters. For details, see Helenet Chart BXO2 and Helenet Notices to Mariners, number two and four. Where the heck do you get those from? Oh, load of Ino. Alright. We're about to leave the submarine zone. We didn't see any submarines. I saw some dark patches on the water. Yeah, right. It's Sunday. They're with their families. There we go. We're now out of it. Oh, We're sure. officially out of the submarine zone. We didn't get blown up. That's good. No. Now we can go to sleep. Yeah. You don't have to keep a watch. <laughs> We eventually got to the southwestern corner of the island of Hydra, uh, where we tied up to the shore. 
Now this is called med mooring and med mooring usually is stooned to and sometimes bow to a key or a shore and uses either your anchor or lazy lines. A lazy line is a line that is attached to the key or marina and extends out. The other end is attached to a massive weight underwater. This can either be a big concrete cube or sometimes it can be a group of very heavy chains which are all linked together. Now when you pull up to a town quay or many of the marinas in the Mediterranean and they have lazy lines, you will reverse onto the quay and stop close enough to throw your mooring lines to someone. Once tied off, you can gently drive forward with the engine, then pick up the lazy lines, usually with your boat hook, and take them forward and tie them off to the bow of the boat. This is the easier form of med mooring. Slightly more difficult is dropping your anchor and letting the chain out as you reverse onto the marina or key. If you want a copy of these steps, there's one in the video description. More difficult again is dropping your anchor and reversing onto a shoreline where you will tie your mooring lines onto a big rock or around a tree to secure the boat. This can be done with one person but is very, very tricky. We always check the bottom first, uh, where we're going to finish up, and ensure that there's enough depth for our keel and rudder. And uh, if we can, we'll try and pick spots to tie off to at that point as well. Someone then either swims ashore or takes a dinghy with a strong line. We use a separate line to tie around the rock or tree and then we tie the mooring line to that. I've seen some people use a chain for this. Then we line up the boat and drop the anchor perpendicular to the spot depending upon the depth. Uh, in the past we've dropped at 10 metres and let out about 40 metres of chain uh, and we've finished up in 3 metres of water once we're tied off. We then reverse towards our spot while the second person comes to the boat to get the windward mooring line and take that to shore. Then uh, we add the second line and we adjust them as needed. Okay, just retrieved the, what was it? Mooring line. Mooring line. Without getting drowned. You just should. And you didn't go off with that. Swam ashore and you didn't undid the knot that I had there. Yeah. Fortunately, it was a bowline, so it should have been. Yeah, but it simple. wasn't lo loose enough. I mean, because the boat was still pulling on it. So. Yeah, I know. But but that's, that's why right. I, I kept reversing the anchor yeah, yeah. a little bit. But I could only go you did so that, far. It was easy to get off. We were drifting towards that other yacht back yeah, there. Yeah. And I couldn't drift too far. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, look how barren it is there. And then it's all on that side. I wait to see your golden smile Feel of a thousand kisses Oh, please stay a while Suck it in. I am sucking it. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like a handful of silk now I'm in your warm embrace Oh, I hope this feeling lasts Till the oceans turn to glass I counted 18 boats coming towards us Well, that includes us Everyone going south We're motoring into Porus And this is about this third way of charter yachts That's heading in the other direction they're all heading south. And Gavin managed to dodge all of them. I'm captured by your charm. Enchanted by your ways. Or it's Greece. We're tied up to the town key. Well, the channel actually. So we have these chips. Right in front of our yacht. Pretty cool. Gavin's going to put a spring line up so it straightens up.
So to Athens. We'd already been here earlier this year when we caught up with Josh and Nicole. On our way in, we almost wrecked the boat by trying to dock in a 25 to 35 knot wind. With no help from any of the marina staff, thank goodness for fenders, I can tell you. We got the mooring line tangled under the keel in the process, and one of our bikes was blown off the dock into six metres of water. And then to top it all off, the marina wanted to charge us 100 euros for their diver to go underneath our boat and untangle the mooring line. Unfortunately, we didn't get any footage of any of this, uh, so we finished off some minor jobs, picked up our new crew and left, a little disappointed with this particular marina. Join us next time as we have two goes at passing through the Corinthian Canal, and our new crew experience a gale on their second day on White Arrow.